All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is your chapter four review. So in your notes, we've got chapter four review. Could somebody in this classroom please read to me the I can statement? Uh, go ahead, Sophia. I can intelligently prepare for my test. I can intelligently prepare for my test. Can somebody tell me how to intelligently prepare for their test? How, Allison, would you intelligently prepare? Um, practice problems. Practice problems. That would be the best way. Would you guys agree? Yes. What are some other ways besides just practicing problems that you could review or that you could help get ready or help get yourself ready for the test well? Watching videos. You could rewatch the videos, right? Especially ones you don't get real well. What else could you do, Ahmed? Review the basics. You could review the basics, which we do all of the time. What else could you do, Molly? Review the chapter test. Review the chapter test or the, uh, the, the review in the chapter, right? Okay, cool. So you guys got a lot of good ideas. The first thing we did um, in this chapter was ratios. So this review is just going to give you a quick reminder about what we did and what you need to know about ratios. Okay, so this is a lot of me talking and you writing. Let's get the show on the road here. There are three ways to write ratios. You remember those ways? Three ways to write. The reason you need to know this is because if you see one of these three ways, you need to understand that it is a ratio. So we have got A over B, which is a fraction. We have got A colon B, which is the use of a colon. And we've got A to C, which is the use of the word to. You guys remember that? If you are going to translate the A colon B to a fraction, what number goes in the numerator? Or what letter in this case goes in the numerator, Abe? The first number goes in the numerator. So if you see it this way, but you like it in fraction form better, and you want to change it to a fraction, just remember that the first, I don't know why I said C here. This should be B. Just remember that the first letter, or the first item, most of the time it's going to be a number, goes in the numerator. Sound good? Yes. Okay. What is another name for a ratio? Everybody, fraction. a ratio is a fraction. You guys remember what the word is means? Yeah. Oh my God, so can I do this? That was just from our last lesson. Ratio equals fraction. Yeah. Isn't that cool? A ratio equals a fraction. Number three, should you reduce all ratios? Yes. Yeah. Always, right? Yeah. So don't forget, we always reduce. Always, always, always reduce. <coughs> okay, and just for kicks and giggles, because this was before Christmas, so I actually lied, I'm going to give you a quick example. If I have two circles and three X's, and I ask you, what is the ratio of circles to X's? What is the ratio of circles to X's? What would your answer be, Mary? Two thirds. Two thirds, right? Um, what is the ratio of circles to X's? It would be two thirds. Now, next question. What is the ratio of circles to total shapes? What is the ratio of circles to total shapes, Caleb? Two over five. Two over five. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got two thirds. Um, and then Caleb's second answer would be two-fifths, and that's not going to make a lot of sense to you unless you add something to your notes, because I'm not going to write all of that down. So that is ratios, fractions. You guys all good? Yeah. Cool. Number two, ratios and unit rates. Ratios and unit rates. Five. What is unique about a unit rate? What do you all know about unit rate that helps you identify it as a unit rate? There's something really, really, really unique about a unit rate. I'm concerned that only two people know what's unique about a unit rate. Needy? Oh, unit rate, Anytime you're dealing with a unit rate, the denominator 
is always one. Repeat after me. No, I didn't say anything yet. In a unit rate. I'm going to start over because I didn't hear everybody. In a unit rate. The denominator is always one. Does anybody remember the key word that tells us we're dealing with a unit rate that you oftentimes hear? There's a really frequent word that when you say it, it actually is dealing with unit rates. Um, but think about driving a car. Driving a car on a road that has signs listed for you. Nate, what is it? So what's the key word that I'm referring to? <coughs> per. Remember, anytime you hear the word per, you're probably dealing with the unit rate. So if the speed limit is 60 miles per hour, so per means unit rate, and if we're dealing with 60 miles per hour, we're talking about 60 miles for every one hour. Is the denominator, does the denominator have the number one mm -hmm. in it? So therefore it's a unit rate, right? So make sure that you understand unit rates, what they are, and you can deal with them. And that's really all we need to talk about there. Number three. Proportions. I don't know if you remember me telling you this, but last year, um, after the MCA test, many kids told me that their understanding of proportions helped them do extremely well in the MCA test. They said, Mr. Pottinger, there was so much proportion work, I'm glad we spent so much time on it because I think it really helped me more than anything else when it came to the MCA test. We are not anywhere near done working with proportions this year. This is our first like exposure to them. So we're going to keep working with them. But keep in mind that this is a key part to what you're going to be tested on later on this year. At least if the test follows the same format as last year, according to the kids. Um, so a proportion. You need to know what they are. What is a proportion? Proportion is what? How can we define it? That's concerning. How can you define a proportion, Ella? Uh, no. How many fractions must exist for a proportion to even be present, Allison? Two. So we need two fractions. Therefore, we have two fractions. And what about those two fractions making a proportion, Mary? They have to be equal. They have to be equal. So a proportion would be two equal fractions. So just for kicks and giggles here, if I have the fraction 1 half, can somebody tell me another fraction that is proportionate to 1 half? Give me another one. Isaac. 1224. 12. Why is 1 half and 1224 pr proportionate, Isaac? Um, because they're both um, half. They're both half of something, right? Yeah. They both have a value of 1 half. Because if you reduce 1224 down, you get to 1 half. Yes or no? Oh my god, so cool. Um, do you remember how we prove proportions? Proving proportions. How did we prove proportions? There was a process we did. Ahmed, what was that process? Bubbles. Okay, did we do bubbles to prove proportions? Yeah. We did, huh? Mm -hmm. No, we did. You could, but if I have, um, I'm going to do one half. And 12 24ths, we did not do bubbles quite yet on this. Mary, what did we do? We found common denominators. Same thing you do when you're ordering fractions or comparing fractions. We found common denominators. So a common denominator for 24 and 2 would be 24, right, you guys? Yes. Okay. 2 times what gives us 24? 12. So if you want to do bubbles, sure. What's 1 times 12? 12. How do you get from 24 to 24? What are you multiplying by? What? One. Why do you get from 24 one. to 24? One. You multiply by 1. So, sure, I'll do bubbles with you. What's 12 times 1? What's 12 times 1? 12. So, are these two fractions proportionate? Excuse me? Are these two fractions proportionate? Yes. Yeah. We have a common denominator, and if the numerator is the same on both fractions, you have proportion. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Yes, question? You could just simplify the fraction. You could just simplify the fraction, but that doesn't always work. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't always work. Now, number 10, solving proportions. This is where the bubble method came into play. Solving proportions. We use the bubble method 
And do you think I'm going to make you show some work on this? Yeah. Oh my gosh, so much work on this. So if I have 1 half equals 12 over x, remember those guys? Yeah. How do you prove, or how do you find x, not prove anymore, but how do you find x using the bubble method? What do you do, Ahmed? The common factor for each? Yeah. Okay, well, how about this? The first thing you do is make a bubble. Yeah. Everyone say, make a bubble. Make a bubble. So I'm going to make a bubble here because I need to figure out how I went from the fraction that I know to the fraction that I only partially know, right? Mm -hmm. So I need to go from the fraction that I know, one half <laughs> to the fraction that I partially know. Do you know how to get from 2 to x? Can you go from 2 to no. x? No. You can't. You don't know how to go from 2 to x because you don't know what x is. Do you know how to go from 1 to 12? Yes. Yeah. How do you go from 1 to 12? Multiply. You multiply it by? 12. So if you multiply the top by 12, what do you already know? What do you do to do the bottom? Multiply by 12. So what's 2 times 12? 24. 24. What does x equal? 24. X equals 24. X equals 24. Remember this whole lining up the equal sign thing? I know that's really, really sloppy because I used my arrows in there, but that's basically the idea of how you would do that using the bubble method. Got it? Mm -hmm. So we can solve proportions using bubbles. Questions? Okay, moving on. What number are we on for main idea? Eleven. For main four. idea. Four. We're on our fourth one? Yeah. So our fourth one is going to be proportions and scales. Is this helpful or no? Yeah. I mean, I could I could just stop doing this. If you say, Mr. Potter, this is not helping me. I'd just rather have time on my own. I've never had a class say, stop doing this. I don't need to do the review. I could just, you have tons of things you could be reviewing. But I, I think it helps. So proportions and scales. So I'll keep going. Does anybody do, let's do a quick poll. How many of you want me to keep going? Oh, I know you guys can't see that in the video, but everyone. So good. Awesome. What number I am? Uh, 11. 11. Awesome. I know we're going fast, but you're keeping up. You're doing a good job. Proportions and scales. So why do we have scales? <coughs> why do we have scales? What do scales help us do? Think about my investment into that big skyscraper we talked about. What do scales help me do? Did I talk about a skyscraper in here? Yeah. yeah. Why, why do I need a scale then? Let's say I want to invest or somebody wants to invest in my skyscraper. A scale would help me do what, Allison? Um, find out the actual size of something. Yeah. So a scale helps compare, compares the actual. You guys remember the other word I used besides actual? What's the opposite of actual? Representation. Say that again. Representation. Compares the actual to the representation. So if I wanted to build a skyscraper, and I wanted to ask all of you guys in my class to invest in it because I don't have like billions of dollars or millions of dollars to build this skyscraper, I would like come to you and say, hey, you guys want to give money? And you all would say, well, what's it going to look like? And I would want either a drawing or a model that is to scale. So in other words, if it's to scale, you would say, well, what is the scale factor? And I would say, well, for every one inch on the drawing, that would be 12 feet of real actual skyscraper, right? Yes. Do you remember that? Yeah. So for every one inch of drawing, that would actually be like 12 feet of skyscraper. And that would be my scale or my scale factor, factor right? Yeah. Okay. So I think we just corrected this assignment, didn't we? I think it was earlier this week, so hopefully that will help you. Okay, so number 12 then, uh, let's give you an example of what that looks like. Um, if I have a scale factor of 1 inch to 6 feet, if I have a scale factor of 1 inch to 6 feet, the question is, um... <coughs> on a drawing, how many feet is 10 inches? Remember that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video because we're almost out of time and then I'm going to restart another video. So if you're watching this, you have to go to the second video to keep going with the notes.